All right, let's talk about Tropical Storm Barrel and the 10 a.m. update. What I have turned on is this beautiful visible satellite imagery where we can get a lot of detail about some of the low level clouds that you can't see using the infrared imagery. And what I'm seeing right now is a system that looks like it is getting stronger. And as I'll show you here in just a second, the latest from the National Hurricane Center has maintained the maximum sustained winds at 60 miles per hour. And sometimes these things can ramp up and the winds won't increase right away, but I expect this thing to start to strengthen later on today. You could actually see some of these low level cumulus clouds feeding in to the storm. In fact, all around it and then near the center of circulation just over the last two hours or so. We've seen a big flare up of cumulonimbus clouds and transferring that energy from the Gulf of Mexico up into the clouds. And so that is certainly concerning. Definitely. So here's the latest look at the uh, 10 a.m. advisory from the NHC uh, showing that the pressure has dropped just a tad earlier this morning. It was at 1002 millibars. It was 999 at 7 o'clock. Now it's 997, so the pressure is dropping a little bit and there's your maximum sustained winds and the system. The uh, forecast track really has not changed very much compared to where it was before. A lot of the models have been back trending toward Corpus Christi again, and so they have moved. It looks like they've kept the uh, forecast track either right around where it was or maybe just nudged it a little bit over toward Corpus. The bottom line is that because of the way the cone is set up, and this becomes really important when you have a north to south moving storm is that if it follows the left side of the cone, it's going to end up making an early landfall south of Corpus Christi. If it moves to the right of this cone, then it's going to be over water for a lot longer, maybe a few several hours longer if it does make landfall a little bit closer to Matagorda or Brazoria. But this is the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center, and if it does follow this path generally, we're looking for a lot of rain uh, here in the Houston area coming up on Monday, along with the potential for some hurricane force winds. So we're looking for high winds on Monday, very dangerous surf accompanied by coastal flooding and a storm surge that could get up to about five feet. As far as rainfall totals, I think five to 10 inches is a pretty safe bet. Now I have heard some folks online mention Hurricane Harvey, and there are some similarities to Harvey, mostly its path. Uh, but this bears no similarity to Harvey when it comes to its forecast path. Remember that one stalled over Texas for four days. Uh, this one is going to be coming through and then exit the area here pretty quickly. So we're not really worried about that day after day after day of um, of rain bands, but it is no doubt going to be a big issue for a couple of days. No doubt about that. Here is a look at the Fox model, which is our exclusive model, and it's showing this thing getting ramped up here. There is a deep south Texas, and it is actually moving off toward the west and then takes a curve off toward the north. And this one's actually following basically right along with the National Hurricane Center path with that center of circulation near Corpus Christi, but moving northward. And here's one of our concerns again for rain and also for wind is that we end up up under one of these really heavy rain bands here feeding up into the Houston area or Sugarland, Katy and any of those spots down toward the west and southwest. So this is when we'll be in for and this is Monday morning in for the high winds, the heavy rain, probably the greatest amount of storm surge coming in. So that is when uh, we really want to be prepared to stay indoors for really most of the day on Monday. By Tuesday, it should start to exit the region, although there may be some lingering thunderstorms behind it uh, Tuesday and the rest of the week. The path is still pointed at an area between Corpus Christi and Matagorda. The effects will be large, however, especially as I mentioned, because of its unusual path working its way almost parallel to the coastline. At a minimum, we're looking for heavy rain on Monday with high winds and storm surge, but stay alert for changes. In other words, if it starts to rapidly intensify today or tomorrow, that is going to change a little bit of the outlook. So use today's relatively quiet weather um, during the morning hours, maybe dodge some thunderstorms later today to, you know, get some of those uh, preparations done for what could be a nasty hurricane on Monday. There's again that flare up of activity right near the center. Now this is kind of a cool graphic that we have. This is based again on the Fox model and we have highlighted here. The yellow are the extent or is the extent of the tropical storm force winds. So we have this paused here on Sunday afternoon and notice how that 
eye that forms makes its way toward Corpus Christi. The orange areas are the areas where we have the hurricane force winds. This is 3 a.m. Monday and then notice as it moves inland here, probably just up the coastline from Corpus Christi, we get in on these winds somewhere in the range of between 40 and 70 miles per hour at least in terms of gusts for places like Matagorda County, Jackson County, Wharton County, and maybe even some, you know, sizable wind gusts up to around Brazoria and Fort Bend. So yeah, there are a lot of things that could certainly change here over the next 24 to 36 hours. But one thing that we do want to let you know is that there's a storm surge watch that is in effect that covers Galveston Bay. It also covers all of the beaches and coastal areas from Galveston County all the way down to the Rio Grande Valley. Another thing to keep in mind for Monday is that when we do have a storm surge in Galveston Bay, it can back up some of the bayous and rivers. And so the level of the San Jacinto can rise, Dickinson Bayou can rise, uh, Clear Creek can rise. So a lot of those locations, not necessarily in the Gulf of Mexico, can still experience a bit of a surge. Uh, three to five feet is what's expected now, but you know that could go up. Hurricane conditions are possible within 48 hours for this highlighted area, including um, uh, Brazoria County and points southwestward, and that's our hurricane watch uh, that is in effect. Now I want to leave you with this. This is the GFS model look at wind gusts and notice as this storm moves up from the south, we start to see some of these uh, well more concerning wind gusts. Now the GFS is showing the system moving farther to the west, a little bit farther inland, which would leave us in the path of these 30, 40, maybe 40 mile per hour winds with some higher gusts, so that'll be coming up again on Monday. Finally, I will leave you with this, which is the rainfall projections. This purple area here, which does include the greater Houston area and just off to the west, pretty solid six to 10 inches of rain will be possible. So the bottom line is right now the National Hurricane Center has it making landfall between Corpus and Matagorda as a category one, but just be advised we're going to be updating you through the day today and tomorrow in case this thing really starts to ramp up and get a little bit stronger. For now, make your hurricane preparations, get some cash, gas up the car, uh, get some groceries and water just in case we do have things like power outages or in case you really need to just hunker down coming up on Monday. We'll have updates for you through the day on Fox Local, on YouTube, on Fox26Houston.com. So please check in with us frequently for updates through the weekend.